Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. It's such a privilege to be up here uh, sharing for, yet again, the newcomer. Because that's all I've got is my experience around this group, and it's I'm sharing it for the newcomer. That's my job. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you to Wayne for showing me how to live life on life's terms. Uh, oh, I am an alcoholic, and my name is Andy. Um, yeah, did not say. I never not said that. Anyway, no, I just come here for friends. I want to say thank you to Wayne, because he taught me how to, like I said, live a life on life's terms through the teaching and the practice of the 12-step program. Um, secondly, I want to thank, thank Dave Kay, because after several uh, attempts at, at going to, into institu- institutions, um, I heard him come in, and he shared the message, and it was so... Uh, inspiring, appealing that I wanted what this guy had and every every day every time he came into this this place, I'll be sat at the back and every week he came in I moved a bit closer to the front and because I heard him all the time and I thought, yeah this is what I want so I'm going to do what he's done um, and I came out and my friend Michael he he met me. I owed him six hundred pounds, something like that. Uh, and he said to me, "That money was, you know, for other things. I don't want it. I w- all I want you to do is come along to my meeting and see what I do." Because he he had been in the treatment center as well. Six days he lasted, and uh, he got kicked out. And I heard about this, and I thought, "Oh my God, he's going to die!" And I came out, and there he was. And he said, and listen, come along to this meeting. It'll blow you away. So I'm not a fool. I'm stupid, but I'm not a fool. Um, so I came along on a Tuesday night and I heard a bunch of you guys sharing this message. And it, it says in the, in the basic text, an alcoholic, um, armed with the facts can win the, with the confidence of a newcomer within within hours. Um, within the hour and a half as I was there, you guys won well, my confidence. You told me there was a, a way out, there was a solution. And I sat and I listened and I thought Michael told everyone about me. Because as Andy said, I was a little bit vain back in those days. Yeah, in those days. Um, and I sat and I said, these guys are speaking my language. And, uh, but come the end of the, end of the, the evening, um, I, went, I said, this is amazing. Um, I think I've got Wayne on the Tuesday, on, on that meeting as well. Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah, I've, I've got Wayne on the Wednesday. I didn't even know he was, he was going to be my sponsor. He just said, phone me tomorrow. I said, all right, I will. And then Mike said, Wayne's your sponsor, is he? I said, I don't know. So I didn't know, but I phoned him anyway, and um, he was more than happy to take me through the trust of program. See, I gave him uh, carte blanche to show me the way. I uh, didn't argue with him. I didn't um, no, argue a little bit, uh, and he showed me how to live live this way of life, leading by example. And that's the thing I like about this group. This group leads by example. Now, we didn't all reach 20 years, 15 years or whatever and come here because this is where, you know, like the old timers go to die. You know, we came here because because we were ill people and we stayed in this meeting uh, through sobriety. And, you know, that's what I want to thank, you know, Wayne, Alexis, John and Andy, Dave, for being those old times that that made this meeting what it is. It's a 
is probably the best meeting in the world for carrying the message. Um, you know, and as Andy said, you know, what, what a th- job, what a thing it is. It's a fantastic thing where we can get excited about a person that walks through the door who's crumbling and uh, living the worst days of their life because we can get excited about the days that are about to, about, they're about to live. And that's how it worked for me. I, I was frightened. I didn't, didn't want to live life. Uh, the, the fear was about not being able to take, take a drink. And um, I found out so quickly that you don't need to take a drink. The fear, I found a, a higher power of my own understanding, which was the group. Um, for a long time, it was the group because you guys were sober and you were definitely a power greater than me. So I relied that on that and uh, my belief in the group grew. My faith in the group grew and um, it was astonishing just what kind of life I lived. Because before, before I came in here, I was in and out of institutions, uh, got uh, as many prescriptions from the doctor as I could. My, my, uh, I was married which it didn't last, it only lasted 18 months. Um, I was unemployable. And I came in here and within three and a half months, dear Wayne said, get yourself a job. And I went, pardon? Uh, he said, and you're sick and benefit back. I went, really? And I thought it was a bit extreme, but I did. And lo and behold, they give me two months money that they owed me. Um, so even when I got a job, which Mike got me, no, no, uh, yeah, he was, you wouldn't, yeah. He got me a job with another crew and then we suddenly went together and, uh, became a crew together and Andy come and work for us as well that, that then, and we were three amigos, you know, we were out there <coughs> doing the work, singing all day long. Mike did a lot of farting, but, um, we, we were, it was just a beautiful time, you know, uh, somewhere I, I'd never, I hadn't worked it for a long time and there we were in this wagon, big cross in the, in the, underneath the uh, mirror, uh, all the books on the dashboard. Um, you know, we just, we were living it. We were living this program. Um, and we went to every meeting we could to share this message because we wanted to shout it from the hilltops, really. And um, people didn't like us back then. They still don't like us now. We don't care. Um, so there we were, going to meetings, sharing the message. And that, at that time, people were coming to this group because they loved what we had. I'm not just saying we had, but they were the only people there that were sharing this message. So they came along, and there's been lots of people come to this meeting as a direct, direct a result of it. And um, it's just been lovely to see. I'll tell you what, we, went, we did um, service today at a local school, and a young girl said to me, she said, um, I would like, would like to ask you, how do you feel when someone new, co- new comes through the door? Does it remind you of the way you were? And I said, look, I feel dead excited. So I do, because I know what kind of life they're going to get if they do the things we've done. You know, this, this program works for anyone. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm no fool, but I'm stupid. And if it works for somebody like me, it can certainly work for anyone. For, to think that I've been around for 20 years is like, it seems like a bit of a joke. Um, but I took it serious when I came in. I didn't want to mess around anymore. I was given three months to live uh, when I went into this last inst- institution. But that never stopped me. Um, what actually stopped me was... Knowing loneliness, like few people ever will experience, uh, knowing degradation, the desperation, the humiliation that goes along with drinking. 
you know, and that's what stopped me. That's what made me want to change. Because I went into the uh, an institution in 1990 and uh, I came out and I want people to know this because when I came out, my ego was so up in the air, you know, my head was like that. And um, I never did anything just to allow people to polish my ego. And after a year, the ego was, uh, people stopped saying, oh, Andy, you're looking really good. You're doing well, blah, blah, blah. And it stopped. I had nothing else to rely on. So I drank. The only thing I could do was I drank because that's my nature. Something drastic had to happen to me. And that was, Reese says it, she was high bottom drunk one, one day, a low bottom drunk another. And that was the same for me. You know, I, I drank champagne with the, you know, with the suits and I drank surgical spirits with the winos. You know, it didn't matter for me. I was, I'm an alcoholic. Um, my rock bombs have been, I kind of hit rock bomb and stayed there for about 20 years. Um, the thing was that my last rock bomb, even though I was given three months to live, and I, I, I went into this institution with a with a different opinion, a different thought process. I wanted to get well, so I did what I was told when I was in their paid lip service, and I came out. Micro belonged to me, and uh, I got Wayne as a sponsor, and I got involved with the group. I've always done service, no, no, well, no matter. No matter what happens, I've always done service, um, and I think that's really important for for a, a really important part of my recovery is that getting involved, being a paid a member of this home group, and this home group is is not like other groups because of tradition four, we're allowed to carry the message in whatever we we choose, um, and we choose to think of the newcomer. Uh, every time when people share up here, they don't talk about drinking, uh, um, drink stories or, uh, they don't talk about alcohol that much. You know, we, we encourage, uh, a newcomer to, s to see that there is a solution and it's vastly more than that because when I got that first job, it, it was, Amazing, because I was earning my own, my own money, paying my own bills. I got the Yellow Cavalier, which I blew up on the way to do a share at Broadreach. Um, it's only in my own fault because I didn't put oil in it, and then it blew up. But um, I was learning. Each and every day I was learning. And I've learned so much. Uh, I've learned how to become a man in this in this meeting. And it's directly as a result of this meeting. Not AA. Through this meeting, they carry the message of AA. Um, but this meeting, the way uh, the message was carried to me. You guys inspired me. You made me want to do something. You know? You made me want to better my life. And as a result of it, we worked together for three and a half years. Uh, we were the last people on, on Mug Nicholas. You know? And... That was brilliant. The job was ending, so me and the what? Me and the girlfriend, because that's it. I had this lovely girlfriend, and every day, for, uh, every week for for about nine years, I asked her to marry me, because I was so in love. Um, and she said no every time. She didn't trust me. She didn't trust who I was. My my behaviours were erratic, and I was always I would always make arguments to go and have a drink um so she said no i worked this program for two years and she asked me to marry her now do i feel grateful every minute of my life because it's, she's my best friend you know uh she's been through thick and thin with me literally thick and thin um but you know she asked she asked to marry me well we got married and we bought a guest house which we worked for 15 years now when I first came in here on a Friday night downstairs you know you could smoke and all that I had to pick a dog in that was my first thing 
I needed to pick up Doggins because I couldn't afford Backy. Um, I was down there and this guy was sharing, I'll tell you what, if you ever come into recovery, don't get yourself a guest house. And uh, we just bought a guest house, you know, um, and it was hard work. But every day, put this program in place and every day was a better day, a good day. And um, we worked that for 15 years. And um, we sold it a few years ago and I took on a brand new challenge. I became a tattooist. Going from a dropout drunk to working on the roads, then becoming a hotelier, and now I'm a tattooist. Literally, I can face any challenge that comes, comes, uh, comes around, comes at me. And that's what I found as well. I can face challenges head on. As Andy said, two years ago I had a stroke. And I was paralyzed and I couldn't speak. All I could say was, yeah, and a swear word. That was it. After uh, eight weeks, I think it was. Um, but when I managed to start saying a few words, I phoned Wayne. And he said, look, listen. Because I was really emotional because I couldn't speak. Um, and even though I didn't know I was, I was going into depression. He said, look, come back to the meeting. Get back into the structure of things, you know, and I came in, I was tearful. I saw people, th this group was so good to me. Um, they stuck by me. They don't shoot any wounded, you know. And um, I came in, I sat down, I, I cried a little bit because it was such an emotional time for me. And knowing what you guys had done in my life, um, you... You allowed me to live happily for all those years. And when this happened and I came back in, you were there. Just, it was like a big cuddle, you know. Um, and I sat there and I started coming to meetings. And as I did, my speech started to come back. Uh, my anxiety level <sighs> went down. My depression went, you know. And I, I became, again, a fully paid member of this own group. And I started doing service. And it's been an amazing journey. Just, you know, more, two times I recovered is through this through this group. You know, uh, and I think, and I, I do thank God, and I bless you all with, with everything I've got that you stuck by me and, you know, uh, you're still part of my life. Uh, Gary, two years old, mate, fantastic. What a, what a great time to be in recovery. You know, um, 20 years is gone like that. You know, uh, I'll say I was a young boy when I came up, but wasn't. I was middle aged. <laughs> um, but I've reached 55 and I feel more alive today <coughs> than I ever, ever did. You know, I. I I have this overwhelming passion to share for the newcomer. You know, uh, I want people to get what I've got. And I wish they could just walk in my shoes for a day because they would, you know, they would know exactly what I meant. You know, um, I've had to work at it though. We don't just come across this, this solution and do nothing, sit on a chair and just listen to it. We've got to put effort into it. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm no saint. Um, I just want people to know if you manage to put the effort in on a daily basis, then you can recover. And you can recover so quickly, you know, that 20 years down the line, you, you're still pinch, pinching yourself. How did this happen? You know, because the money won't... Uh, People whose money were, were not, was not on me to, to recover. You know, um, I was very poorly when I, when I went to the last institution that I went into. Um, I've had my ups and downs, you know, but life is life. You've got to, if you, <laughs> this is a silly thing, if you get lemons, you got me lemonade, yeah. yeah. But no matter how bad it's got, I've never once wanted to pick up a drink. 
Never once, not in 20 years. When I became serious about working this 12 step program, never once. The obsession to drink left me and it's never returned. Um, that perception on life has really changed as well. I'm a grateful alcoholic and I've, I've, ne I've, I've never seen a grateful alcoholic drink. You know, uh, people that come in and work the socks off of this get everything that they, 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 need, that they need. We have to work at the wants we, uh, we have to work at the things that we want, you know, and in working this program it's allowed me to uh, encourage me as well to do the things that I, I've always wanted to do, you know, um, like being a tattooist. Amazing. What a job. I get to inflict pain on people, get paid, and they come back and ask more. Nice work if you can get it. You know, it's a job that I've always dreamed about, and now I'm actually doing it. So, you know, anything you can think about that you want to do, you can do if you put your mind to it. If you work this program, do the right things, the right things will happen. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing program. Oh, um, I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you because you've all played a part in my, my recovery. You know, I wouldn't have been here if it weren't for you guys. I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for you guys sharing the message, for carrying this miraculous message to me. And also living, uh, leading by example. Because, you know, you guys are the family I've made for myself. You know, um, you've got my back. Well, most of you anyway. Um, you've got my back and you, um, you know, you care. If I wasn't sat here tonight, you'd be saying, where's Andy? Yeah. Just like if any of you was, wasn't here tonight, you'd be saying, where's so-and-so? Because we care. But the caring I've got was was by being given the truth. Um, I'm a dead man walking with this program. Mike says it, my, my life is on HP. You know, if I don't do this, they'll take it away. You know, um, it's pretty, actually I've not done bad because my speech is usually all over the place, but, um, yeah, it's not, but not, not been bad tonight. So, um, but yeah, by leading by example, I've been able to go one day at a time, 20 years in a row. And it's, like I said, I did service with John and Nigel today. Fantastic. What a, what a feeling it was to speak in front of all those children, to let people know that this is a place, a, a resource within the community. Thanks, Jeff. A resource within the community. If anybody has or knows of anybody that's got a problem with drink, you know, they could come and speak to us. That was brilliant. Service with Mark yesterday at a local treatment center. You know, see, you see these guys' eyes lit up. And that's, that's all I'm here for. You know, I, I love doing service. I love seeing the life get, come back into people's eyes uh, when they suddenly realize, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. Or if she can do it, I can do it. You know, um, because we got, uh, which I think is the best sponsorship in the world. I don't know anywhere of anywhere that helps people recover in such a specific way. And it's all down to this 12 step program, but it's down to this group on the way it carries its message. You know, we, we dress up smart because we have respect for the group. You know, um, and we, tonight, curry night, what a, what a buzz. I'm having a curry tonight. And that's what we do. We go on, on, we go in on curry nights, do fun days. What a great privilege it is. My social life is better today than it ever was. I'll get to see all you lovely people, you know, at least twice a week before I had to sit on home, drink, drink, and drink again. 
that was the only social life I had. You know, today I've got an amazing life. Thanks to you guys. Um, God bless you all. I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.